Now in question 2 part A then we're asked to draw a diagram, a probability tree diagram. Well we have the situation where we have two trials, okay? This is the first trial and this is the second trial. The first trial will be about the type of machine that produces the rods and the second trial will be about the condition of the rod, whether it's defective or not defective. So I start first of all by labeling my trials, the type of machine and the condition. Okay, next we start to put the probabilities in. We have three machines, A, B and C, and the probability that a rod is produced from machine A is, we're told, 35%. So I would want to write that in there. Probability of A is 35% or 0.35. We're also told that similarly, B produces 25% of the rods. And if this branch is B, I would write that in as the probability of B is 25% or 0.25. We're left to find out the probability that machine C produces rods. Okay, well we know that this should all add up to 100% or one whole one. So when you add up these two decimals you get 0.6. So that leaves us with another 0.4 or 40%. So I could fill that in and we have the probability of C is 0 0.40. Okay, now the next thing you've got to be very careful about because we're told that the rods produced from A, 3% of them are defective. And you might want to just rush in and write probability of being defective is 3% or 0 0.03. And the probability that you get a defective rod from B, you might want to just rush in and write probability of defective from here we're told is 6%, 0.06. And similarly, getting defective rods from um, machine C, we're told is 5%. So again, you might want to rush in and write probability of defective 0.05. Well, this is a classic case of really not doing a good tree diagram. And this is going to result in possible errors. Notice how you've contradicted yourself by writing the probability of D is 0 0.03 and here it's 0 0.06 and here it's 0 0.05. It doesn't make sense at all. So you've got to be very careful. Being defective is dependent on the type of machine that produced that rod. So what I'm going to do is remove that and we would write this like this. Okay with conditional probability in. Okay? We would have the probability that a rod is defective given that it came from A okay, is 0.03. The probability it's defective given that it was produced by machine B, here it is here, is 0.06. And similarly, probability of a rod being defective given that it came from C is 0.05. And on the other branches, okay, knowing that each pair of branches should add up to one whole one, we've got the probability of a rod not being defective given that it came from A is 0 0.97. These two must add up to one. And similarly, you can see I filled in the one for not being defective given that it came from B as being 0.94 and similarly probability of a rod not being defective given that it came from C must be 0.95. Okay, so that completes part A and hopefully you've drawn an accurate tree diagram, something along these kind of lines. Okay, now we move on to B part 1. And in B part 1, okay, and now we move on to B part 1. And in B part 1, we're asked to find the probability a randomly selected rod is produced by machine A and is defective. And we could write this using these symbols the probability it's produced by machine A and defective and you can use this upside down U 
which is often pronounced intersection or you could say and. So in this case probability of A and effective. All right? And working out this probability it would be to go up here produced by machine A and it's defective given that it came from machine A. We would need to multiply these two probabilities together. In symbols, okay, I'm just going to write it as the probability of A multiplied by the probability of being defective given that it came from machine A. Notice it's not the probability of D. It's not probability of A times probability being defective. We'd have had contradictions, remember, if we'd had our original tree diagram with just PD here, PD here, and PD here with different values. So take that back out again. So all we've got to do is just put in the numbers and we've got 0.35 for the probability it came from machine A and the probability of 0.03 being the probability it was defective and came from machine A. Working that out as an exact fraction that comes out to be 21 over 2000 or as a decimal it comes out as 0.0105. So either of those answers would do. Now in part 2 we're asked to find the probability that the rod is defective. Now this is where we would write probability of just simply D. So again this hopefully establishes why we must have correct notation through this section here. Okay. Now the probability of a rod being defective can be achieved by various scenarios. It could have come from A and been defective or it could have come from B and been defective or it could have come from C and been defective. So in other words I could write this in symbolic notation that it could have been A, produced by A and have been defective, or, which is a mutually exclusive event, so we put plus the probability it came from B and was defective, so that's written as being B and defective, or another mutually exclusive event, it came from C and was defective, so that's C and defective. And if we work this out, it is just simply a case of just going along the branches and multiplying the probabilities together. Well, we've got the first answer. It was 0.35 times 0.03, which is going to be the 0.0105. And for the probability of B and being defective, that's going to be 0.25 then times 0.06. So we've got 0.25 times 0.06. And finally, probability of C and D being defective, that would be 0 0.40 multiplied by 0 0.05. So 0 0.40, or just simply 4, multiplied by 0 0.05. Working that out, if you do it as an exact fraction, it comes out as 91 over 2 thousand okay or as a decimal that is 0 0.0455 okay and that brings us now to the end of part b